Caleb's two rushing touchdowns. I think those were fabulous play calls. It was, I think we were like within the three yard line. And I was glad that we ran the ball at that point versus trying to force a pass in the tight spots um, when you don't have some of your best receivers and you know, asking guys to uh, step up and catch a touchdown pass in a tight zone. So um, because the run was successful, those RPOs were, you know, it was basically just, you know, uh, Caleb Williams walking into the end zone. So um, I think that was, that, that doesn't happen if, unless they're respecting the run. Well, the issue with that is they were not they were not taking like he literally could, he walked in on that read option. They yeah. were just they they were selling out to try to stop the run, mm-hmm. uh, and he literally just that, the second one especially he just kind of he just kind of walked right in. The first one was yeah. kind of contested, but the second one it just it was seemed like it was there all day. And the O line surge uh, it's so refreshing. This something's been missing probably since maybe 2016. Just a big na- and I under- underscore nasty. These guys finish blocks. And they drive guys into. If you watch the, the the line play, these guys are just driving guys back and driving them into the ground. It's that they're big and they're nasty, and I'm I'm really enjoying watching the offensive line this year. Yeah, and um, I, you know, they get a charge out of um, you know blocking for, for the running game, and you could tell it right there on the goal line. Uh, both of those um, RPOs with with uh, Caleb Williams scoring. I mean, he had a great night tonight too, but quietly. Um, he, he accounted basically for five touchdowns. He had three yeah. passes. He had two uh, two rushing, and he did have an interception, but he didn't play the fourth quarter at all, which was fantastic because we didn't want him to play the fourth quarter, even more so after Travis Dye got hurt. Anything can happen in this game. And, you know, he took a couple sacks, and um, he was taken down. Um, so, um, yeah, this is his third game call, in a row, right? Caller? Five, he counted for five touchdowns three games in a row. That's just yeah. amazing. We got we got a caller. We got Austin Williams joining us. Austin, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me, guys. Austin, what did you think of the game tonight? On the, on the win. Um, um, congratulations on the win over Colorado. Um, it was gut wrenching to see Travis Dye go down. He he's a great athlete, and he will be missed here at USC at USC and in that in that offense, but. I think USC tonight did what they were supposed to. They beat up on a bad Colorado team. You got to see a lot of your second and third string guys. Got to see what y'all have for the future. And and I know you all pointed out several times the defense played really well tonight, including two Ture, Ray, I believe is what his name. He was a monster out there. He was, He's great. He was everywhere. I I think he's going to be a, a star for USC, or if he's not one already. Yeah, you say Tuli? Yeah, Tuli's that what you're talking about? Yeah, Tuli's a beast. And and, and uh, up up as Frag points that out as well. He says, "How about Tuli's stats for the partial game tonight? Props to Coach Nua for developing him into a first rounder." Yeah, and that's a that's a great point because um, Nua is going to be the reason why we're. I I, I cannot wait. We get 10 plus wins this season. It's going to be like it's the Christmas is going to keep on coming for USC. It, it, and we, it looks like obviously we are going to at least 10 wins. But there was a lot of uncertainty in, in the, in the transfer portal and a lot of uncertainty when it came to uh, recruiting, but this is going to be a full year of recruiting coming up. And uh, I think the transfer portal, I think it's going to be limitless. I, it's going to be, I, I really think we're going to pull in some big, you know, kind of like what Alabama's doing, pulling in the pieces they need, not, not shedding, you know, and getting uh, cast offs, actually going in and getting top players that are going to want to come to USC because uh, there's going to be starting time. This defense is clearly struggling. They're going to lose Tui Pelotu. He's going to the NFL. He's not staying around for another year. He's gone, I think. Uh, and I, I really think there's what Nua is doing on the defensive line. Um, I really want to see, you know, Corey Flash, right? Right in front of, LBC's plush seats right in front of a 10 yard line. He had that amazing <laughs> tackle for loss. LBC's uh, and, got good seats. You guys, and, 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 you guys LBC has right good seats. Like, LBC's dude, like, got some good away, seats. I'm like, dude, that happened. I do it. It was, it was right in front of where your seats are. I'm like, he he, he has to be more consistent. You know, he, he showed why, like, I texted Rick. I'm like, 
this is why we're all excited about number, you know, the number zero getting out there. Yep. He showed so much athleticism on that play and blew it up and made a great tackle. You know what I mean? A lot of times we're seeing he comes in, he, he won't, he won't break down and make the tackle. He's blows. He gets juked or blows right past him. He, he just, he just got that guy. And we just need that consistency for him because he has the athletic ability. And I'm hoping that Nua gets his, you know, his teeth into him, gets him going down the stretch here. So we can have more to sell. So I have a question I agree, for I agree you, gentlemen. You. Jordan Addison, I know you touched on it, said said he didn't look it as ready as he should have. Does that concern you that he was out there tonight? Just well, I, the Austin, that- let me let me let me rephrase that. I don't I don't I wouldn't say as he should have. I think they were just get, getting him back in the swing of things more than anything. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he I I don't know that it's like, you know, should should I don't think it's the wrong, wrong the right word. I would say they they had him out there. He made a couple plays, didn't really do much. And 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 as I think Tim noticed, he actually took his helmet off and put his helmet away. He wasn't going to play anymore. I, I I think he's still coming back from that injury for sure. Yeah, because yeah, I don't know who it was. You don't wanna... it was one of, I mean, I've, I listen to so many SC. There's Gixer. so many great SC people out there. I don't know who Gixer, it was. If you but... talk smack about my fraternity brothers, I'm sending you a virus. Someone someone said something I can't, on one of the talk shows. If it was Keeley and and Kessler, or if it was you know, um, Michael oh, and Alicia, six. or if it was Shock and Spradley, somebody said that that they thought he was going to be on a pitch count. Yeah, it was sixty six dude. Just put his sixty six dude, sixty six lucky dude. Perfect, perfect wording. Addison was getting sea legs back. Yeah, yeah. so what's great description. Happen? Pitch count also awesome. yeah. description. He probably had fifteen to twenty plays, and this was ideal. Because now we're going to get to see how he feels tomorrow, how he's going to get to recover. But you'd rather have him out there today against Colorado to get back, like like uh, 66 dude said, get his sea legs back versus doing it in a big game like UCLA. So now he's going to see how does he recover um, and what does he need to do to get himself ready for UCLA. Can he go against UCLA? We don't know that. You know, We don't know um, how he's going to feel tomorrow. And if, if, if it's just not going to be, um, again, because the difference in competition, Colorado versus UCLA, uh, the windows are going to be tighter. Your, your cuts have got to be tighter. Um, and, um, and if he's not able to go, then he's not going to go. And, and we've got other guys that can step up. But he's going to ultimately have to make that decision with the coaching staff. Yeah, I agree. He's not thing. We have guys that should be out there. And anyone's ever had a, a nasty ankle sprain, I don't care how much you tape it or whatever you do, that thing's going to hurt, you know, and it, it stiffens up on you. So um, obviously I'm sure he has great training staff to do it, but if he's not a hundred percent, we have the guys they've shown up for the last three weeks that they could get it done.